Hello everybody, hope you're having a wonderful day and today hopefully as you can see we're going to be talking about the bassoon. Yes, this is the instrument that belongs to the woodwind section, you can further divide into the double reed woodwind section and it is play, it plays in the tenor and bass registers and is responsible for adding that deep tone to the woodwind section. Now before we get any further into the instrument itself, I want to first take a look at its anatomy all right, so let's get into the anatomy of the bassoon. All right, so as you can see, as most good instruments, it sort of breaks off and you can sort of dis disassemble it with multiple joints. So this joint right here, the bottom joint, is often called the butt joint, right, or the bottom joint. This one right here, this middle one, which goes right here, it's a joint you can scratch it, and it's called the long joint. And up here, we this entire joint is called the bell joint. Okay, the house of the bell, we'll get into that later. Then over here you can see this this metal piping comes out, this is called the crook. The piping is called the crook, and over here we have the double reed. So let's break it down once again. So over here we have the butt joint, which houses one key, not much else, and it's also where the sound sort of goes into and then out of, right? So this is a proper this is a, this is a necessary place sort of redirecting the sound which came from there, the air alley, which came from here and now it's going there. So that's the butt joint. Here we have the long joint which has all the keys, which houses all the keys, right, to manipulate the pitch and also um, when you attach it will, will connect to the crook. And then we have the bell joint and it's called the bell joint because it has a bell and the bell is indeed where the sound comes out from. So contrary to what you might expect, you blow into the bassoon from here, the sound goes down, the air goes down here, it comes up the entire bassoon and ends up out there, through there, through the bell, under most circumstances, right? And this is a crook, it's the metal pipe as you can see sort of sticks out so you can play it. And right here I have enlarged, it is a double reed. Now a double reed is basically two pieces of wood cut which are sort of placed together with a crevice between them, right? And that's where a double reed is. And this indeed has a double reed, and so it looks like enlarged. You can hopefully see. And bassoonists often have to cut their own double reeds. That means they literally have to assemble this entire thing from wood from scratch, have to cut it, which is quite something to say the least. Now, as for how you hold the bassoon or how you play it, you hold it like that. So your fingers, if this is a bassoon, must be that. Your fingers are going, your fingers would be here over the keys, as you can see. Then your you, your bell would be coming out from there and you put your mouth on the crook which would reach your mouth like this so you play the bassoon like this and once again add to the oboe uh, where you have a double reed right that two, those two pieces of cut wood um, you, the way you put it is you purse your lips inwards like this and you stick the reed there and you stick the reed there and play as can be seen over here so that's what you're doing that's how you would play the bassoon Okay, now let's come to how it makes a sound, the bassoon, sorry. So how does the bassoon make a sound? Well, that's all about the double reed. So you might imagine, okay, this just looks like one like one really complicated piece of wood, a wood pipe. But when I blow, even into a wooden pipe, I don't get any sound. How is the bassoon creating music? How is it creating sound? Like, you know, um, yeah, how is it creating the bassoon, the, the tone of the bassoon, how is it creating it? And that has to do with the double reed. So that's a, a double reed, which is also used in the oboe and the English horn, consists of two pieces of cut wood sort of formed like this, which makes a crevice. And what the double reed is doing is when you blow into you blow into it through here, you blow into the double reed and the you go in the gap between the two pieces of wood. And what the double reed is doing is is that when you blow into it, that those pieces of wood are vibrating. They're vibrating quite a lot in fact. And those vibrations of the wood is what goes into this pipe and that resonates throughout this entire um, throughout all the joints, throughout the entire piping, and then it comes out in the form of the bell. So this vibration of the wood, the, the double reed, is what resonates to create the sound of the bassoon. So the, the vibration of the double reed is what is resonating to create the sound of the bassoon. That's what you have to understand. And if you watch my oboe video, it's the exact same thing with the oboe. Now great. Now how, as for how the keys manipulate it, right? How, what are the keys purpose and how do you pay, play different pitches like how do you play a you know, major scale CD, F, G, A, B, C, how can you manipulate the sound? Well, that has to do with a very simple concept which I explain. Now if you watch my other woodwind tutorial, like not if, my other woodwind informative videos, I have mentioned this in each one, I'll mention it again for, in case you haven't seen those. So all woodwind instruments, all wind instruments in fact, 
work on the principle that if you force air to go through a small pipe, a pipe of small length, right, it is going to create a high sound. And if you force air to go through a larger pipe, uh, a pipe of longer length, longer length, it's going to create a what is it going to create? It's going to create a longer, a deeper, what am I saying? A lower sound. Sorry. So a short pipe will create a high sound, and a longer pipe will create a lower sound. So what's in fact happening is when you're blowing into the bassoon, what you what you notice is that the it's very hard to demonstrate in this one, but the keys are open, which means that there's open space usually, right? Um, there's some amount of open space, and what that's going to do is the, the air is going to come in and go out from the first few keys which are open. We are not pressing any key down, right? It's going to go out from there, like this. So the air is not actually going out from the bell. Here it's coming out from this one. And by pressing a different combination of these keys, you are forcing it to go through more and more length and just manipulating the pitch, making it lower and lower. And if you press all the keys, right, and you you get the um, uh, the sound to go all the way through and only come out to the bell, and you ideally get your lowest sound that way. And long story short, you press the keys to make the make them higher, make the sounds higher or lower. As for how that works, I want to explain that. Okay, great. So now we know the anatomy of the, of the bassoon. We know how it works. Let's get into a little bit more about the instrument itself. So the bassoon, as I said, plays in the tenor or bass section registers. That means it plays in the moderately low to low register. It's a very bassy instrument. Now you can see, give me it by its size, and um, it is as I said, part of the woodwind family. So we have the different sections of the orchestra. The bassoon is part of the woodwind section of the orchestra, and when its tone is characterized, it's quite the tone is actually remarkably similar to that of an oboe, just quite a bit lower. So it has a very very lyrical, very very jovial um, tone. It has a it has slightly thicker tone than the oboe. So the tone is the tone is slightly thicker. It has a one thing you should really listen to it and not um, try to piece together from my very bad descriptions. But it has a lyrical tone. You know, um, a, yeah, a lyrical is the best way to describe it. Slightly thicker tone, nice low, deep tone, right? Um, yeah, so I don't really know how else to describe it. You should listen to it for yourself to get a better understanding of what the tone of a bassoon sounds like. But as I said, it's remarkably similar to that of an oboe. Just imagine an oboe's tone being much lower and slightly thicker, and you get the bassoon tone. That's just my subjective analysis. So, due to that lyrical tone and stuff, it is quite important uh, for the woodwind section and I explain why it's very important because in the classical woodwind section I mean the, in the regular woodwind section I mean you don't really have all that many instruments so you have the flute right you'll have the oboe you'll have the clarinet and you'll have the bassoon these are the four main instruments of the woodwind section now there are some other instruments but um, this is the four main ones and the four ones you see most often and the thing about these is this is is that the flute plays in soprano the oboe also very much plays in soprano the clarinet players and soprano alto can, can figure out so, so the, I should translate for those of you who haven't watched my previous videos where I've talked about you know what soprano alto means. The flute plays at a very high register, it plays very high. The oboe also plays very high. The clarinet plays in soprano on alto, that means it plays high but can also play in the middle areas, the middle pitches, the oboe is capable of, I mean the clarinet is capable of that. So once again, flute plays high, oboe plays high, clarinet plays high but a little bit lower than both of them and the bassoon is, is what plays in bass the bassoon is what plays low so the bassoon is really the only low instrument in the entire movement section so it's very important that it's there because it adds the low harmonies to the movement section it adds the deeper harmonies the more um, <coughs> more prominent it adds, so it will either be supporting us to the movement section and it adds you know, the, the music becomes much more colorful much more um, harmonic or harmonious or harmonious or like, much more harmonious much more full when the bassoon is there because you're adding those lower tones now and the lower tones good the bassoon is very important for that reason because it's the only good instrument that that's adding those lower tones and as I said and the bassoon then bisects through the wooden sectors and throughout the is adding much more colorful uh, much more, um, you know, either through accompaniment harmony or accompaniment medley, it's really um, making the orchestra sound much more full. So it doesn't really have that much of a solo role in orchestra, it's not the main melody, it's just supporting the melody. Usually in orchestra, that's the role a bassoon has to play. Um, sometimes you'll see the um, bassoon have a, a prominent role in the orchestra, sometimes you'll see it. The, the, either bassoon will only the bassoon will play, or the bassoon will take up the major melody, or when the woodwind is taking the melody, bassoon will participate a lot. Um, it, it it happens every now and then, but not too often, not as often as some other instruments. So yeah, its main role is that of an accompaniment in the orchestra, but it can also take um, the main melody on its shoulders when it needs to. 
great. Now when we come to ensemble, group ensembles, I'm not too sure about how the um, bassoon works in group ensembles, so I'm sure that they do include it and that it is quite important as I said because it's really the only source of bass um, in a very rudimentary woodwind ensemble and woodwind section which is as I said the flute, the open, the clarinet and the bassoon. And then in terms of its solo career, solo repertoire, there's quite a bit of solo repertoire for bassoon, you have bassoon concertos and many other forms for bassoon, also quite a few tunes for it. So bassoon solo repertoire is quite numerous and there's quite a bit of repertoire for bassoon. So if you're playing bassoon, you won't be lacking repertoire. They will be there both in solo and orchestral and ensemble. You should find all three forms of repertoire. That being said, this is really all that I know about the bassoon and I'm able to pass on to you. Um, and unfortunately, our school orchestra does not have a bassoon player, so I can't even refer, refer you to them. So, the, if you are very curious to learn more about the bassoon and hear from someone who actually plays the bassoon, I encourage you to go to the All Star Orchestra and try to learn from there, or to go to the Philharmonia Orchestra and try to learn from there. It's the videos on YouTube you can search and you'll find, and those are quite good, very good in fact. So, in case you are wanting someone to with a bit more experience to tell you and give demonstrations about how the bassoon sounds and everything. Then I encourage you to go watch those videos. And um, with that being said, from my side though, thank you very much for watching. This is, um, I hope you've taken something valuable away from this lesson. I hope you've learned slightly more about music now than you did before. And that being said, yeah, thank you very much for joining me today. And I'll see you next time we'll be talking about another instrument. Thank you very much and see you next time.